If I tell you planets natural oxygen factory what kind of image come to your mind just think about it close your uh, you know eyes and think about it what kind of image comes to your mind yes probably you might think something like this uh, a, a rich canopy a forest canopy full of the trees because the trees we know that the trees release a lot of oxygen isn't it so trees are the real oxygen factories that is the reason that we put the trees uh, you know we for forest that we plant the trees on every june 5th but for unfortunately we don't really take care of those those wonderful trees right so that is one option uh, you know one uh, one thing that we actually miss out do you know this is a very famous image of earth this image is called uh, the blue marble and it was taken by Apollo 17 spacecraft in the year 1972 if you look at this image uh, it's very very clear that the entire planet if you look from the space is blue in color do you know why yes 72 percentage of the the earth is full of uh, the water so the it's all ocean ocean life but not many people know much about the oceans or its importance to the uh, life on earth if I zoom into any of these oceanic uh, uh, places the, the sea water you can see the creatures like this these are something called picoplanktons or uh, nothing but cyanobacteria have you ever heard of these picoplanktons or its uh, use utility for the life or even our own life you know this is one of the very good popular science publications by the government of India. It is very cheap, only 5 rupees per magazine. And it is called Dream 2047 by DST, that is Department of Science and Technology. I often write in this uh, journal. One of these uh, 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 magazine's cover page is uh, my article. The cover story was about the two organisms that are very key for maintenance of the life on Earth. And these organisms are called Prochlorococcus and Cyanococcus. Have you ever heard these names in your life? Prochlorococcus and Cyanococcus? Well, probability is very low that you might have heard of these two organisms name. But, you know, what if I tell you these are the most important two organisms responsible for the life on Earth? Because it produces 65% of the oxygen in the air that we breathe. These simple creatures, inconspicuous marine algae, is responsible for 65 percentage of the oxygen in the air that we all breathe so without this two algae we cannot live there is no life on earth so it, the, the real oxygen factory of the world is not really the, the trees that we see that you know it is really the marine algae responsible for it have you ever wondered what is the smell of this the, the dead body of these two algae probably you know it might comes to you as a big surprise you all know it it's very simple I mean we all come to know it. it's part of our daily life well the, the smell of the dead body of this algae is nothing but petrol or diesel you know what are these diesel or petrol this is nothing but uh, you know this petrol the 99% of the petroleum products or the fossil uh, you know fossil fuels comes from the biomass of the marine algae that is also not many people understand it how does this algae produce the biomass? Of course, by photosynthesis, right? Algae does majority of the natural carbon sequestration, helping us to mitigate the climate change. You know, the CO2 in the atmosphere is, uh, you know, it's a greenhouse gas, and that is responsible for, you know, the increase in the, the temperature. So the CO2 needs to be removed. The removal of the CO2 is known as sequestration. And the majority of the carbon sequestration happen in the, the oceanic water by the same phytoplanktons because they do something called photosynthesis that is assimilation of the CO2 into the sugar and proteins and when they die this biomass goes all the way deep underneath the ocean and after millions upon millions of years this becomes the petrol that we burn you see so without algae there is no life on earth and even no fossil fuel and no carbon sequestration it will become a hothouse earth but still majority of us do not know anything about this algae so do you have you ever heard of the coccolithophores the beautiful phytoplanktons in the ocean the coccolithophore uh, you know in addition to looking so beautiful these are also responsible for the monsoon 
Do you know how this small algae is responsible for the monsoon and the rain? Because this coccolithophore releases DMSO, that is dimethyl sulfonate. And this dimethyl sulfonate is a seeding molecule for the cloud seeding molecule for uh, you know the monsoon patterns too. So the coccolithophores as well as the other uh, you know other uh, uh, algae of the same type. For example, you know phyocystis. Phyos this is a photo of the phyocystis. This is like uh, you know the form-like algae that the photo I have taken from Antarctic mission in 2016-17. I'm privileged to be part of Indian Antarctic team. So this is also an algae and this is also responsible for the cloud seeding by the DMSO molecules. So how many of you know that the algae is responsible for the, the, the rain? Another algae is Trentipolia annulata. My own group study have revealed that this algal spores are responsible for something called the blood rain. The rain which is red in color. Have you ever heard of the blood rain? Well, blood rain has even been reported in Odyssey by uh, you know Homer and uh, also in the, the Bible so the it's very very common the, the phenomenon especially in South India you know so this is not because of the aliens that used to be the public perception before our paper came out it's by the algae have you ever heard of this kind of bioluminescent algae bioluminescence is also commonly found across the Indian uh, coastline if you ever t take a, a, a coastal cruise in the night time you can see the bioluminescent uh, you know in uh, many places this is also because of the algae something called nocticular scintillator do you know the lichens if you ever been to Himalayas or to uh, the western cuts you can see a beautiful lichens and what are these lichens this is also because of the algae that the lichens are alive Lichens is a symbiotic partnership between algae as well as, uh, you know, mushroom, the fungus, uh, the microbiote. Do you know the coral reef? If you watch the Discovery Channel or National Geographic, you can see a beautiful coral reef, you know, so beautiful, enchanting. And what these coral reefs are? Without algal partner, that is symbiodinium, the coral reef is not alive. Have you ever heard the problems of the coral reef because of the ocean acidification? All these topics are, you know, we will cover up in this, uh, 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 throughout this program. My team from Central University of Punjab, we discovered three new species of algae. The first one, as you can see in this figure, the cover page of the Ocean Digest is, uh, you know, Ulva Paschima. The other one is called Cladophora goensis. The third algae that we discovered is called Ulva uniseriata. All these are endemic algae from Indian coastline. Do you know the algae is used in medical forensics? Many algae are edible and very expensive. Algae cause marine invasion and hazardous blooms. Algae is also used for biofuels. And there are several medicines that is, uh, you know, available from the marine as well as terrestrial algae. Do you know our own Prime Minister have said about the seaweed cultivation many times in the, uh, in the country. You know, the, the importance of the seaweed cultivation. He keeps on saying that. So there is a huge prospect on working on the marine as well as seaweed farming as well as seaweed based uh, you know the uh, seaweed based economy that is a prospect or the driver of the new India but how many of you know about the seaweeds so the, the, the kinds of seaweeds that is common across Indian discipline here comes the picture that I'm offering a new course that is called discover algae diversity ecology and importance so through UGC Swayam platform so please come and attend this this uh, beautiful MOOC course so the Swayam MOOC course is Discover Algae, Diversity, Ecology and the Importance is for 8 weeks. Engagement time is 3 hours per week and overall around 24 hours in total. There will be uh, two, this is a 2 credit course at the PG level and there will be 20 modules. Exam pattern is that 30% will be online MOOC as well as uh, the, the, these are MCQ, online MCQ and the remaining 70% will be proctored exam uh, uh, that is a pen and paper based exam conducted by the NTI. The objectives of this program is that introduce the history of the algology in India and the world, introduce the temporal patterns of the algal evolution, introduce the algal diversity with most important algal species worldwide as well as in India, introduce algal ecology introduce algal physiology and the life cycle, introduce algae mediated symbiotic systems like lichens and coral reef systems, 
introduce the importance and of the bio prospecting avenues of the algae introduce algal molecular systematics so all these are the objectives what are the learning outcomes of this program important algologists and their contributions to the field how algae evolved and the coevolution of the algal symbionts what are, which are the most important algae especially algae from india and pertinent taxonomic characteristic to identify the algae how algae is important on the ecological point of view which are the most common life cycle forms of the algae which are the important commercially significant algae and how algae can drive indian economy how dna barcoding and dna taxonomy is used in algal systematics so the team comprises besides me are vandana kapil vinayak from harising gaur central university in sagar professor c r k reddy from mumbai ict and also the technical reviewer is engineer surinder khurana from mayon university this is the the team of this uh, the mooc so see you soon in this wonderful swayam mooc so please register for this course through the swayam portal or through uh, the the swayam app thank you for watching